Salut everyone! In this video, I'm gonna be covering the release of Fedora 41, the latest baby from Red Hat. And let me tell you, I have a lot to say. Let's get into it. As always, let's start with a little bit of context. As you know, I've been covering Fedora release since I think the 39 of the 38. And I have to say, like, I've seen a really good, I would say, like, uh, improvement related to gaming and content creation in general for those last like three or four releases. I would say that the overall like, spirit related to the release of Fedora 41 is a little bit different compared to the release of Fedora 40. Like in Fedora 40, I had the feeling they were more like ironing out all the, the, the latest like issues and encountered previously. And in this one, they are moving forward to more like innovative approach uh, when it comes to this release. I want to say that I did two full stream review uh, for this specific release. I did test like the GNOME version, the KDE version, and then we did like a lot of like testing related to gaming because I thought some type of inconsistency. I will talk a little bit more uh, about them uh, later in the video. But again, like this is going to be more like an overall review for creating content and gaming. It won't be really a review related to the difference between GNOME and KDE because I don't think they are worth it. I'm going to talk about it at the end of this video because there is still some I want to mention. But I would say like the focus is going to be more around the feature of Fedora itself and not the feature related uh, to the desktop environment. I hope it makes sense. As always, we're going to start with the positive aspect of this release. And I want to say that the installation was perfect. Like we arrive at a point right now where installation are just like perfect. To me, we do have now a full support of secure boot. So if you are dual booting and you are still using Windows 10, Windows 11 for whatever reason, and you need secure boot enabled, well, now it's totally supported through Fedora. And I think this is, in my opinion, the main biggest feature they added because they added uh, the full support of secure boot for the nvidia driver and this is in my opinion the, the biggest value added for this uh, release right now i know a lot of you guys enjoy playing those anti-cheat game and some of them they are not available on, on linux yet or maybe they will never but like they are not there yet and guess what now you can dual boot no problemo la mama no. So, so this is really, in my opinion, the biggest point for this release. I, I mentioned it was perfect, and I want to add another point, which, in my opinion, is great. If you look at the way you had to install Fedora before, most of the time you had to add the RPM Fusion repository, and you had to do it manually. It was kind of a pain. Now, while the, you are running the install process, you will be ask through the install process if you want to add those repo you just have to tick one button press yes in both KDE and GNOME and you will have access to everything related to the non-free repo and I'm thinking about the codec I'm thinking about the Nvidia driver it's just one click now and I have to say this is also a really really good thing for users that are coming from Windows and doesn't want to touch the terminal I, th I think uh, Fedora there reached the point where it's so easy to install like a Linux distro on your recent hardware. It, it's, it's just amazing. So I have to say it, it kind of like, you know, like it was something I was waiting for like the last like two or three releases, but they finally did it and they did it, in my opinion, in a really good way. So Red Hat, uh, good job on this one. So I'm going to repeat myself there, but again, they support the latest NVIDIA driver out of the box. To install them, it's not installed like right away automatically. When you install the distro, you still have uh, to tick the RPM Fusion repo, and then uh, you have to add them. But in both uh, KG and GNOME, it was just going through the actual store of the desktop environment, search for the NVIDIA driver, press the button, and boom, you are good to go. Uh, what I really uh, liked and I really appreciate is that during my first stream, I did the install, but they were still installing the 560 version of the NVIDIA driver, which had a big security issue. But like three or four days after, when I, I went there again and I checked if they corrected the issue, they did correct the issue and move on from the 
you know, like faulty driver to the next 565, I believe, like uh, beta driver, which don't have any uh, security issue. And I thought it was a nice value added to see that the maintainer of RPM Fusion is actually following the actuality and checked that uh, those drivers, even if they were like the stable one, had a security issue and they decided to push to the next like beta release of the driver to solve uh, the, the security issue. So I think it was a really good value added there. Again, good point there for the maintainer of the RPM Fusion. They did a good job. Another good upgrade I need to mention here is DNF5. So DNF5 is the latest package manager version for Fedora and this packet manager is so fast it's it's actually disgusting I like it I, I, it's it's really nice they push it as a default it was already available before I believe in the Fedora 14 solution but it was not the default one now they push it as default there is some issue related to it I'm going to talk about them in the negative uh, point related to this release but I would say overall it's a positive to have a such a fast package manager finally by default on Fedora. So now let's talk about gaming. Uh, some of the issues related to Fedora 40 have been ironed out when it comes to gaming. Not all of them, but I would say if you are, for example, like a Valheim enjoyer and you had, you know, those, those bug uh, relative uh, to launching some of those saves you had on your machine, well, guess what? It has been solved. So now Valheim worked perfectly on Fedora 41. Finally, this is great. You will see I found over issue, but we'll talk about it later in the in the negative part. But I would say like some of the previous issues, they have not been let, you know, in the wild. They kind of like work towards them and they fix them, which I think is great. Now, when it comes to content creation, I need to mention the fact that they pushed the latest version, like RC version of GIMP, if you are into that, which, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's available uh, through uh, any of the package manager out there. Another uh, good thing I discovered while using the GNOME version of Fedora 41 is the way they implemented OBS Flatpak within uh, the GNOME store. I have to say, guys, this is the best implementation I've seen for a while. So the native version of OBS Studio is really outdated. But if you go through the Flatpak version, within uh, the GNOME store, you would have the latest version of OBS, or almost the latest, like before later, latest, which is not that important. But my point is that when you install this version, you will have access through the store to all the different plugins. You just have to click. And, and I think overall, this is the best implementation so far I've seen for installing OBS. Again, I'm not a really big fan of the flat pack. Uh, for OBS, I like using the native version because I had some some weird encounter on my production machine while using Flatpak. I think like installing the plugin was a pain through Flatpak. But here, the way they set it up is way easier. It's 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 just crazy. Like I think it's it's one of the best, if not the best, implementation I've seen so far. And and I need to say it on this point. Gnome uh, Red Hat. Fedora 41, let's go. So now let's talk about the negative. The negative is that because Fedora is still like a mother distro, even if they help you a lot to install all those drivers and the, the overall experience is way better, it's like the best to date, there is still like some work you're going to have to do manually. And when I'm talking about work, I'm, for example, thinking about uh, the, the way the driver are installed. Uh, if you are using an NVIDIA card, you will see that the, the way they install the driver is through AK mod, which is fine. It's a proprietary uh, version of the driver. However, uh, the, the way like the GSP firmware is pushed by default. And again, it's not really like the, the Fedora's fault. I'm, I'm not blaming them. Okay. But it's just the way it's set up right now. If you want to have the best gaming experience and if you are using an NVIDIA card, well, you still have to do some homework to deactivate, for example, the GSP firmware manually. So I'm not expecting a company like Fedora to do it, but as an end user and a gamer, you will still have to do it manually. If you go with a distro, like for example, like Cache OS or uh, Pika OS, you will have the driver also installed correctly. But on top of that, you will have 
all the little like option and feature like correctly set up out of the box. And this again is a price to pay for using a, a, a mother distro like Fedora. Uh, I, I, I think like uh, Nobara is doing it too. I'm gonna have to double check. I, I don't remember. Uh, but overall, this is uh, something you will have to not to forget if you want to have the best experience while gaming. Concerning the kernel itself, you can go uh, with the base kernel. I prefer switching uh, to the Cache OS kernel while gaming and uh, through the COPAR, uh, COPR, okay, like the community repo for Fedora. Sorry for the pronunciation. Uh, you can install it pretty easily. I did it live on stream, no problem. But again, another step to do to reach, you know, the perfect gaming experience. Now, another negative I want to mention, and I'm going to be mentioning it for each Fedora release, is related to the fact that this distro and the philosophy of the distro is ready to innovate. Like, you can't take off the fact that Fedora has been innovating for the last, like, I don't know, 10 years when it comes to Uh, desktop experience, I'm thinking about Pipewire, I'm thinking about like all those innovations, they push, they push, they push. It's fine, okay, but you're gonna have to be aware of those because when, you know, you innovate, most of the time you can have also like sometimes regression of weird behavior. And Fedora team is really good to, you know, move the library left and right and you're gonna have to relearn everything for a new release, so maybe not everything, But you're gonna have to relearn because they not, like to, you know, like move some library from one folder to another. They like to they like to play around and reset the standard for each new release, which is fine, okay. But for the experience out of the box without you putting your, you know, nose under the hood, it might be problematic. So two example, like two concrete example. Uh, I, I noticed a really weird behavior while running Deadlock on Fedora. Uh, I believe it might be a little bit related to Deadlock, might be a little bit related to Fedora. I spent a lot of time trying to debug what was the source of the issue. To date, I can't tell what it was, but what I can tell you is that on my main machine, Cache OS, if I run the game, Deadlock, I will have way more FPS, no matter what mod I'm in, compared to Fedora. And I couldn't, you know, like, find out what was the real issue related to Fedora. Is it bad? It's kind of bad, but it's not that, it's not a deal breaker. The game was still running super well, but instead of having like 450 FPS, I will be around 250 FPS and I can't explain why. The second point I need to mention here is related to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I'm part of a Discord there and, I, and I've seen like one user which had an issue launching Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the native version, on Fedora 41. So it's kind of like the same problem we had with Valheim, with Fedora 40, but now it's another game. And uh, someone else found uh, the issue. It was related to the fact that some of the libraries, they moved around. So if you want to fix it, you're going to have to go fix it manually if you want to play the game natively. And again, this is the price you're going to have to pay uh, related to innovation. Uh, on each of those really. Are you okay with it? Are you not okay with it? You are the end user, you choose. But I have to mention them here. Uh, innovation is great, but sometimes, you know, uh, you have to break some eggs uh, to do some omelette. <laughs> omelette au fromage? Yes. <laughs> okay, now, the latest point uh, is related to the documentation. I had to play with DNF5 uh, while uh, moving repository uh, left and right, adding them and, and enabling them, disabling them. And I noticed that some of the documentation related of DNF5 was not up to date. And my guess is that because they are pushing so much innovation, sometimes they just forget to update their wiki online. And man, this is not fun. Okay, let's, let's say it this way. Uh, I, I had, you know, some conversation with my community and everything, like when I was running like some research on Google to find the wiki related to DNF5 and I was trying like different pages, different wiki, different community, like pages or whatever. And then it was a pain. Like, let's say this way, it was a pain. We fixed it, but I do believe they are a little bit behind when it comes to populating their latest documentation online. So be prepared to that, uh, you know, maybe it's going to be fixed in the coming days. But at the time of the 
stream it was a pain and i need again to mention it to you guys all right so how do we conclude this one so this one i have to say that it's more positive than negative i have to say that we are in a phase right now with all the big i would say like contender of linux distribution out there we are at a space where i think like the, the, the end product is finally ready to be pushed to the mass. So let me explain. I, I, I just reviewed like Ubuntu uh, 24.10 uh, and I was feeling like it's way more polished. It's kind of like ready for all the gamers out there who own an NVIDIA card because let's not lie to ourselves. Like most of the gamers, they use an NVIDIA card. And I would say like Ubuntu and Fedora now latest release give an experience which I believe is above the crowd. Right, it's it's above the crowd because the main issue related to installing a distro, in my opinion, is the NVIDIA driver right now, and they provide such a good solution. Right, you go there, you you don't need to deactivate secure boot. You you just put uh, your uh, little key, you install the distro. There is no hiccup relating to the installation. You can activate the third party repo. Uh, such in a good way with this release of Fedora 41 and it's gonna work, right? It, it's gonna work. It might not be the best experience for gaming because you still have to do some tweak, which which is a shame, but it's it's part of the model of Fedora. Like I'm, I'm not expecting like those big companies to, to go at this level of tweaking. And this is the reason why we, you know, we have like great distro like uh, Nobara uh, or Kashi OS or Pika OS that do like all the you know, like tweaking behind the scene for you guys. But I would say like Fedora right now is in the best pace he has ever been, like ever, ever, ever. And, and, and I need to say it. That's my first point for the conclusion. And, and, and I think this is great for Linux in general, uh, for people who want to switch uh, from Windows. This gives uh, them, I would say, like a better experience. Now, when it comes to the choice of desktop environment, I'm nobody, uh, you know, to say that you should go with one or another. You do your own decision, your due diligence, your research, depending on the hardware. But what I have to mention, though, is that the GNOME version of Fedora was, in my opinion, way above the crowd compared to KDE. So let me explain. Outside of the fact that KDE, in my opinion, like, bring more features for gaming, I have to say, like, the, the polish that the, the Red Hat team put in this one was just awesome. Like, my, it, it was my best GNOME experience today. I know, like, a, a lot of you guys kind of, like, praise uh, the GNOME uh, version of Ubuntu, uh, which is great. But, like, this Fedora one, for me, was way better. Okay, uh, way more polished. The installer was awesome. I have to say, like, uh, the, the GNOME store with all the plugin related to OBS, like included within them was just a really, really good experience so far. So again, you choose the one you want for gaming. I, I would still stick to KDE because of the feature, uh, but I, I would say like GNOME is, you know, like just awesome. Like I have to say it and, uh, you know, I, I'm not the one pushing GNOME normally, but I have to say like this one was a really, really good experience. So overall, I would say Fedora 41 is good. There is some, you know, little things that need to be solved, like always, uh, with Fedora. But this is really, like, a really good surprise for me. I'm really curious to see what Glorious Egrol is going to push uh, with the next Nobara release. I'm, I'm really impatient to try it. And uh, yes, that's all for this video, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to support with a thumbs up. Put a comment below because the channel really needs it. If you want to support this channel financially, do it via Patreon or the YouTube membership. Guys, thank you again for watching and see you in the next one. And as always, bisous, bisous. Man, I'm even coughing like crazy, guys. I'm sorry I had to make all those cuts because every like 30 seconds, I have to cough. My eyes are like getting out of my head. But I have to push this video for you guys. So again, I'm sorry for the broken voice. We'll do better next time. As always, bisous, bisous. Take care.